Hello, my name is Nikki Smits and welcome to my video about my clownfish mermaid drawing. I made this image for Mermaid 2019. It's an art challenge that encourages people to draw mermaids every day of May. I did not draw a mermaid every day, but I managed to do four this month. For this drawing I started by drawing a bit of background because I wanted my characters to work well with the flowing background that I have in mind. I made the background very light because I was not sure what color I would pick for it. Also I didn't want to confuse it with the lines of the characters I was going to draw next. I made a really rough sketch of the figures and like the background I made it very light again. I do that by sliding the opacity of the entire layer to something like 50% or lower. You can find that option near the top of the layer window. On my screen the layers are located at the bottom right. For everything that I draw, lines and colors, I use a different layer. Which means I will have a lot of layers at the end of this drawing. The lines for the fish are on a different layer than the lines of the mermaid because I'm not sure yet if uh, I will make them the same color. I only know that the fish and her tail have to be orange with white but other than that I still have no idea. I don't use many keyboard shortcuts because I do not use an external keyboard. I always draw on my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, which is like a laptop tablet with a drawing screen. It only has a few buttons on the side and for me they are Shift, Alt, Control and Undo. There are a few more but they are not relevant right now. And let me know if you have any questions about this drawing tablet. I start coloring by putting a base color. This color will shine through in a couple of places so it will define the colors of the finished drawing. Because these clownfish are orange I chose a darker and a warm color. I change the line art to something I think will fit the final drawing. You can select a layer and then click on the little square icon directly above the layers in the layer window. This will lock the layer which means that if you go over it with a bigger brush, the brush will only touch the lines in that layer. Here I use another trick to only draw inside the lines. I select the base color layer by pressing CTRL and click the layer thumbnail. Next I make a new group by clicking the little file icon at the bottom of the layer window. I click on the group layer and click on the icon with the circle inside the square near the group icon. You can now see a little black and white thumbnail next to the group layer. This means that everything in this group is only visible in the parts indicated by the white in the black and white thumbnail. These white parts are the base color I selected earlier to make this group. You will now be able to use bigger brushes and not color outside the lines of the base color. I only use two different brushes. One is a brush with a watercolor look. It's called Heavy Wax Crayon and I adapted it to look softer. This is a standard Photoshop brush. I will get into changing the look of brushes in another video because this is a bit detailed explanation. The other brush I use has a drier pencil look. It's the Bonus Pretty Dry Gouache Brush by Kyle Brush. This brush is standard with Photoshop CC.
as a finishing touch, I always draw the highlights on top of the line art layer. This way it will stand out more. I felt a bit bad about drawing on top of the image that I just drew but with this background I think it will add more depth that I draw over the characters. I added a sort of blue shadow under the white coral strings. I do that by double clicking the layer and clicking on drop shadow. I didn't make it very dark, this way it has a bit of a glowing effect. To make the characters blend in with the background better, I added some blue shadow. To give the illustrations a bit more watercolor look, I added a layer of actual watercolor texture. They are black and white and the opacity is set to around 40%. I go to the drop down menu in the layer window and instead of normal mode I set the layer to screen mode. It makes the image a bit lighter but also blends in the texture nicely. On top of that I make another layer with a light warm color and set it to screen mode again. This makes the entire image look more warm. After that I select the half circle at the bottom of the layer window and choose color balance and hue saturation and play around with the color some more until I'm satisfied. Thank you for watching my video, like and subscribe if you want, bye!